how freaking appropriate for a romance novel, um, a blush named Orgasm. So, where was I? Of the relationship between him and Perspe Perspepony. Hey guys, so I am finally, finally, finally doing a book review. And if you don't like reading, then I'm sorry. I guess you can skip this video, but I love reading and I really love to share a good book that I've read. I just finished a really good book and it is by an author that I actually have done a review on before in a previous video. I just had to do another review on one of her books because I just think that she is a really talented author and I think that, you know, really talented people deserve to be recognized. So I finished reading this book a couple of days ago and I figured it's coming up on Valentine's Day. I think a romance novel is so appropriate for this time and it is definitely not your typical romance novel, which is what I love. I love to be surprised by what an author can bring to the table when it comes to a romance novel because oftentimes they do sound the same. So I'm going to get ready and talk about the book that I read and I am going to introduce a few new products that I have bought recently and haven't tried out yet. But everything that I use in my video today I will list in the description box down below if you're interested. The eyeshadow palette that I'm going to use today is from ColourPop and I have not used it yet. I'm really excited to use it. It is the Boudoir Noir palette. The shades are really universal but um, you can create so many different looks with it. I'm also excited to try, and I don't know why I haven't tried it yet, I just haven't. You know, we all have the normal basic staples that we use every day for makeup, and sometimes it's hard for me to branch out to new products. So I had gotten this NARS Iconic Glow Duo, and it is the Laguna Bronzer and the Orgasm blush. I really want to do something kind of romantic and uh, kind of get in the mood for Valentine's Day. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm just going to get ready and talk as I get ready and let you in on this book that I read and let you know what I think. So the book that I read is by an author named LJ Shin. She has written many different romance novels and she's really good at it because she finds a way to write, especially the male lead character, in such a way that you really kind of hate him at first, but then oddly you grow to love him. And the characters she writes just seem so different than in other romance novels that I've read before. The novel that I read is called The Villain. In the beginning of this story, we meet a young and tearful Persephone Penrose and it is during a flashback. She is having an exchange with her aunt whom she had a really close bond to and her aunt is on her deathbed losing her battle to cancer which has completely overtaken her body. And as Persephone is saying her goodbyes to her auntie Tilda, she begs and pleads with her aunt not to leave her. And at such an, a young age, she's never experienced death before, so she doesn't understand it. She just knows that she's not going to see her aunt anymore, and she's very upset and emotional about it. And in an attempt to calm an emotional Persephone down, her aunt tells her she will never leave her, and any time that she needs her company or needs to talk, to look up into the sky and search for the clouds because as Persephone was growing up, her aunt and her would look at the sky and pick out clouds and 
give them names and pick out the funniest shaped clouds and it was one of the fondest memories that Persephone had with her aunt. So her aunt told her to always look to the sky and talk to her if she needed. Her aunt also told her everybody in their lifetime gets a cloud wish and they only get one so she needed to use it wisely. But if ever there was a day where there was one lone cloud in the sky, then all Persephone would have to do is look up at the cloud and recite her cloud wish and her Auntie Tilda would grant that one wish. So all throughout Persephone's young life, she saved that wish. She refused to use that wish until she had something really good saved up that she could wish for. And as a young adult, she still had that wish. She had never used that wish until one day she regrettably wasted it on a man named Killian Fitzpatrick, whom everybody called Kill. And he was a man that she'd known for many years because in the circle of friends that Persephone had, he was the brother of her best friend's husband. For as long as Persephone had known Killian, she'd always had this secret admiration for him. But it was always very one-sided because although she very much noticed him, he didn't seem like he even knew she existed. In fact, any time that Persephone would be in his presence, it was almost as if he avoided making eye contact with her or avoided looking at Persephone. He wouldn't even acknowledge her presence. So on the day when she finally had a private encounter with him, she had no idea it was going to be because he had to save her life from an accidental poisoning. Killian had walked into a suite that Persephone was in because she was in preparations with her friends to be in a wedding. Upon getting the final preparations together so that she could go to the limo, she had picked these flowers and cut herself and sucked the blood and that is how she got the sap from the flower in her system and she started having a reaction and Killian uh, entered the suite to retrieve the rings for the wedding and he saw Persephone in this state of reaction swollen and about to pass out from not being able to breathe because her throat was constricting. Killian proceeded to force her to vomit to get all of the sap from the poison or whatever part of the flower that he could guess that she ingested out of her system. And then he proceeded to throw her in the bathtub, gown and all that she was supposed to wear for the wedding. In her vulnerable state and kind of inebriated state because she was not in her right mind due to the poisoning. She admitted her feelings to Killian. Throughout the whole encounter, Killian was extremely cold. He was rude to her, very dismissive. He acted like she was absolutely stupid for getting herself into this mess in the first place. So after Persephone's vulnerable admission regarding her feelings for Kill that she'd been harboring for years, she was completely dismissed by Killian. When Killian was fixing to leave the suite after tending to Persephone and making sure that she wasn't actually going to die on his watch, Persephone looked out the window and saw a lone cloud in the sky and thought that would be the best time to make her one wish that he, she had for her lifetime that her Auntie Tilda promised that she would be granted. And the wish was for Killian to fall in love with Persephone. His response was for her to basically stay away from him and that he hoped that she would find some nice boring guy and marry him and have children and live a boring life. So obviously Persephone felt instant regret after making that wish and she really thought, you know, this wish was not to be taken for granted. She truly believed that she had a wish and that her Auntie Tilda was going to grant her this wish. 
She did end up marrying what she thought was a nice guy, but turned out not to be such a boring guy because he put her in quite the situation. As the story brings us to the present time in the book, Persephone had been left high and dry by her husband. He had disappeared and taken all of their life savings. Persephone was left with no clue as to where her husband was, but she was left with the full knowledge that he had racked up quite a lot of gambling debt in the entirety of their relationship. So with nothing to her name other than her menial paychecks that she received from being a preschool teacher, she moved in with her sister in a tiny studio apartment and the two of them just tried to make do and deal with the situation that Persephone was now having to deal with. As life went on with no answers to where Persephone's husband was, she was met head on by a couple of thugs who were looking for repayment for the debt that her husband left. And according to them, he owed about a hundred grand and they finally threatened that if she could not pay them back within a certain time frame, they were either going to pimp her out or they were going to kill her. So obviously Persephone was in great turmoil because, you know, she didn't know what she was going to do. She was just trying to think of any possible solution to this problem because her sister obviously didn't have enough money to give her as a loan to repay this debt. She did run in a circle of friends that were incredibly wealthy, but she was also left with the guilt because she didn't want to ask her best friend her friend was expecting a baby and she didn't want to put that kind of stress on her friend. So unfortunately, the only solution that Persephone could even think of was to ask Killian Fitzpatrick himself. She was embarrassed having to think of having to ask for this favor from him, but she knew very well he could definitely loan the money out. $100,000 was like buying a bag of chips to this guy. Killian was the heir and CEO of Royal Pipelines, which was passed down to him through his family. And one day he was going to be expected to pass it along to his future children. Now, Royal Pipelines was known for very destructive practices within their business, and they were not well liked by the media at all. The company was known for their complete disregard for the earth and for nature and for all of its resources. But as Killian was getting older, he realized time was of the essence and his younger brother Hunter was already going to have a child before him. Killian's father told Killian straight up, if you don't get your act together, Hunter's child is the one that's going to inherit the family business. So of course, Killian couldn't allow that to happen. He was going to take advantage of the opportunity that presented itself when Persephone marched through his office doors. I'm gonna go ahead and do my eyebrows real quick and then I will be back to talk about the rest of the book. All right, I'm back with my eyebrows. I always feel so much more human when I have them painted on. So Killian saw Persephone's dire need of this money as an opportunity to also fulfill what he needed in his obligations to carry on the family tradition of providing an heir. Killian proposed that he would be able to extinguish the debts that she now owed because of her husband and his proposal was that, well, he wanted to propose to her. It was a business transaction. He basically told her, I will never love you, you will be my wife, but you will have your own separate house. You will have your own life. The only time that I want you to even make an appearance beside me is when we need to go to charity events, when we need to be in front of the media, and when you are raising my children. So Persephone adamantly declined Killian's offer and walked right out of his office because she just could not fathom the idea of being someone's surrogate, basically. And Persephone could not imagine bringing children into this world with a father like that. So she walked 
out of his office, she thought what a miserable life that would be to be in a relationship with somebody who could possess no feelings for her. Unfortunately, Persephone began to feel like she was being backed into a corner. So that was when Persephone decided that she had no other choice but to give her life and her body up for Killian. After accepting the lengthy contract that Killian had Persephone sign, she realized that she was going to have to make the best out of the situation. She thought maybe over time he'd be able to open his heart to her and maybe she would wear him down enough to be able to have a relationship. She thought maybe she'd be able to change him. And how many women think that they can change men and it never happens. She found out over time with Killian that indeed, just like every other woman finds out, she could not change him. And she realized Killian really didn't seem like he could possess any kind of emotion that a normal person would. So the story continues and the relationship, well, if you can even call it a relationship, is just based on purely a power struggle between the two. Kill demanded control and Persephone demanded that he let go of some of that control. All of her attempts were basically pointless with him because she just could not get him to open up. He just wanted what she was contractually obligated to give him. Annoyance was likely the first emotion that Killian even showed with Persephone because he thought that she was downright insufferable. And the more that Persephone pushed Killian, the more that he pulled away. But what she didn't know was under the surface, Killian was battling quite a few demons of his own. Killian had been successful at keeping those demons under wraps for many years until Persephone came along and stirred them to life. And I will tell you, Killian was not a likable character at all. And it wasn't until three quarters of the way into the novel that I even felt anything other than disgust with him. He just was an arrogant prick. But what was so refreshing about that was the fact that I have read so many romance novels and throughout the course of all the romance novels that I've read, all of the lead male characters tend to sound the same because their basic foundational characteristics are all set up the same way. It wasn't until I understood the demons that he was battling that I really understood his character and the reason why he was the way he was. It didn't make his treatment of Persephone any better, but it made it more understandable in a way. I am going to put on the rest of my face because I don't have that much more to talk about and I don't want to talk about too much because I don't want to give too much away, but I'm going to put on the rest of my face and I will be right back. I've finished my makeup and I am really pleased with this eyeshadow palette. I think these shades are so pretty, so pigmented, and they're really easy to work with. After reading the book, I realized a lot of Killian's behavior could be triggering to some people. The way that Killian talked to Persephone and treated her bordered on abusive in some ways. Although he never laid a hand on her in anger, a lot of his words and actions could be seen as just as damaging. And so I just want to make that very clear in case that is a sensitive subject for you. I think it's a lot of why I had a hard time connecting to Killian at first because he was not a likable person. When you read the book, you will come to understand that his behavior is somewhat genetic and also somewhat situational. And that'll give you a better understanding as to why he is the way he is. But during the story, Persephone wasn't given the satisfaction of having that knowledge. A lot of Persephone's determinations about Killian's 
behavior and his character were misunderstandings or misinterpretations as to why he did certain things. So those misunderstandings made it really hard for her to comprehend why his behavior was so reprehensible. It was when Persephone finally realized what she was worth that Killian finally came around and he realized what he stood to lose if he didn't allow himself to open up and he didn't deal with the demons that he had inside of him. I really love LJ Shin's novels because her characters are very well developed. They have a lot of depth and they're not like any other romance novels that I've read. The characters in a romance novel typically follow the same foundational characteristics, the brooding, unattainable, playboy guy. It's very one-dimensional. It's not a lot of depth, but her characters have many different layers. Layers! And it's so fun reading her books because I love how she'll insert something in the book that may seem to the reader as insignificant, but as she writes this story, she brings these, what you think are insignificant pieces and ties them all together in the story. And it's like, oh my gosh, that makes so much sense. I really felt like in this story, I could really connect with a lot of the characters. It was hard for me to connect with Killian, but Persephone, I felt the desperation that she had to change somebody that she loved because she so desperately wanted to be with him. She saw something inside of him that he didn't see. He was just very resistant to having a relationship and opening up to somebody and she brought that out in him. While I know this isn't your typical sappy love story that you would read on Valentine's Day, I do think the ending makes it a noteworthy one to consider. If you're looking to read a book, I really think that this author has done a really ingenious job of weaving together a very complex story with very complex characters. I will continue to read more of her books. I'm actually already starting on another LJ Shin book. She writes those stories that you just cannot put down and I have not read a book from her that I didn't like. If you see another video of me recommending another book from her, it's not because she's asking me to, it's not because I'm getting paid to, it's not because there's any obligation for me to at all. I just really love this author. I think she has a wonderful ability to write. She's very creative and her characters just are not like any other romance novel. I read this book on Kindle Unlimited and uh, this is not sponsored by the way, but I just tell you how I read my books because I read a lot of books and I would love to have paperback or hardback copies of every book I read, but I just don't have the space for it. And as many books as I read, it is just more feasible to have them all on a tablet or my phone. I have the Kindle app on my phone and I pay a monthly subscription. It is $9.99 a month and I can read as many books as I want that are listed under Kindle Unlimited. Some authors do not list their books on Kindle Unlimited, but I really enjoyed this book. It was one of those ones I couldn't put down. I gobbled it up in two days and I was taken on a roller coaster ride of emotions. It was just a fantastic read and I highly recommend this book. I highly recommend this author. I think she does a great job at creating really visual stories and creating really complex characters that you can really relate to. And I am always on the hunt for a good book. So if you ever have any suggestions for me about what to read next, please leave me a comment down below and let me know. I am not just stuck on romance novels. I say this over and over again. It's just 
the genre that I gravitate towards. I love many different types of genres. I just love reading. So if you have any recommendations, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for your patience and for your time. And I will be back with another book review. And I will be back with more makeup stuff. And I hope that you enjoyed my review today. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.